Hey, how's it going? This is Prakash. I am one of the co-founders and the co-CEO of Xano. In today's Connect Series video, we're going to be connecting Xano to Bravo Studio. For those of you that don't know Bravo Studio, it is an awesome no-code front-end tool that allows you to take a design file like from Figma or XD and bring it directly into um, Bravo Studio and then convert it into a publishable native mobile application. So it's really awesome. And one of the things that Bravo Studio allows you to do is connect to data, right? And one of the connections here, you can see Xano's logo, is you're able to connect to Xano. So I'm going to show you how to do that today in Bravo Studio. So clicking on Bravo Studio, uh, you're going to start in the app dashboard. But if you go to the API collections over here, you're able to just actually create a new collection. And today we're going to start from scratch. And I'm going to just call this um, Xano API. And I'll click Save. Okay, so um, before I fill this out, let me go into Xano and uh, show you a demo workspace that I have. I basically have two database tables. I have a users table with one user, myself. I also have a products table with two products, okay? Then I go to the API and I have all of the API endpoints to uh, add, edit, delete on the products table, on the users table. And I also have some endpoints that will uh, sign up a user and log in a user. So this is just important to know that Xano automatically generates these endpoints for you. You don't have to do anything. So let's go ahead and connect uh, this all. Uh, so let's go ahead and connect this directly to Bravo Studio. So I'm going to go to get products, right? So this specific API endpoint hits that products database table and returns product. If I run and debug it, I can see that here. It's returning those two products. So I'm going to copy the endpoint URL just by clicking this button. And I'll go to Bravo Studio. And um, I'm going to add my first request, which is the get. I know the method is get right over here, get request. So I can fill this out. And all I have to do is click send because Bravo Studio requires you to uh, test out that API to get a demo response. And here it is over here. Now in Bravo Studio, we have to define what fields we want to actually store and use as variables within our application. So in this case, I want to say that I want to take the ID of the product coming in, the name, and the description. I don't necessarily need the created timestamp, but you can certainly do that. So if I go to request response, you can see that that's how it's storing it. And what I like to do, especially here in Bravo Studio, is specify the name of the uh, object that's uh, coming through. So I'm going to say product ID, because otherwise you're going to have a lot of ID variables and you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Um, so we'll do product ID there. And I think uh, we're, we're all ready to go. It automatically saves in Bravo Studio. You can see it says saved. All right, so that is how you do a list view. Let's talk about how you do uh, a single item in Bravo Studio. So let's say instead of getting uh, the, the two products, I wanted to just get one. So I will show, uh, or I'm going to go ahead and add another request. I'm still going to use get. And back in Xano, I'm going to go back to my API endpoints. And you can see I have one that calls a specific product ID. So I'm going to click that. And you can see it takes in a product ID. Uh, so if I run this right here, it requires a product ID. And then uh, I can go ahead and run it. So in Xano, I'll copy this endpoint URL here again. And then I'm going to paste it here. And you're going to notice that this is the variable. This is the ID that it's going to request. Now, in Bravo Studio, they require you to do a dollar sign curly brace around any variable that you have, right? So this is how I'm going to do it here. And then what I'm going to do is I'll go to body. I'm going to click JSON, and it's going to ask the format of the request. So I'll go back to Xano. I'm going to copy this over here because that's the input that we take in this endpoint. And I'll paste it here in Bravo Studio. And then here, where it's asking for a product ID, I will again specify that variable. So dollar sign curly uh, brace products ID, right? And I'm just mapping what the API says. It's called products underscore ID. And that's what I'm doing here. And that's what's mapped over here, OK? So now that I have that done, I'm going to go to test values. And uh, I could manually specify this, but I found the easiest way to do it is just to click send. You'll see that it, it automatically fills in. You need to do a, um, a test value for that input. So remember, if I go to the Xano database and I look at my database, I have two products. I have number one, a denim jacket or jacket, and then number two is the shoes, OK? So I'll we'll go back to that API endpoint. Or actually, I'll go back to Bravo Studio. And so if I do test one, I should get that jacket. 
and I do, right? That denim jacket. And again, I specify what fields I want and then request response. I will say um, here, product ID. Okay, so that shows you how to do the list view, right? List of all products and then a single item view. So that, that looks good. So now I'm gonna actually show you how to create an item. So we've done gets, now let's do a create. So I'm gonna click this plus button in this case, I'm gonna click change it to post. And let's go back to Xano, right? We should have an endpoint to create a product. So this is post product, right? And in this case, it takes a name and a description. So this is very similar to what we just did. I'm gonna take that endpoint URL. I'll go back to Bravo Studio. And then I'm gonna paste this over here. Now in the body, I wanna to go to JSON. And then I'm going to go to Xano. I'll hit run and debug. I'm gonna copy this payload over here because that's what it requests. And then I will go ahead and paste it here. So remember in between these quotes, I'm gonna do um, dollar sign and then curly braces, name, same thing here, dollar sign, curly braces, uh, description. So this uh, will take this and then, um, you know, uh, through Bravo Studio, add it to the Xano database. So again, uh, easy way for me to do it, just click send. And then here, I'm just going to add a, uh, a watch and I'll just call this an Apple watch, all right? So this is the test uh, request that it's gonna send. If I go to Xano, you can see in the database in my products, I only have these two uh, items. But if I run this request over here, um, you can see that it's added as item number three. And if I refresh the database by clicking this button, you can see the Apple watch was added. So I know that it's connected and it's ready to go. Um, so back in Bravo Studio, again, I just select the items I want, request, and then product ID. All right, that is ready to go. So now I have this add an item. So the next thing that I wanna do is show you how to do a login, which is also a post request. So if you're like creating a login screen and you want your users to log in using Xano, you uh, hit this plus button. I'm gonna do this post request over here. Then I'm gonna go back to Xano, go to the API, and we have one called auth login, right? So it takes an email and a password. Um, it does all these functions and then it returns an auth token. And for those of you that, that don't know, anytime uh, you log in or sign up, you're given a unique token that tells the front end, hey, this is Prakash or this is the person that's logged in. And that gives you access to authenticated endpoints. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, but here when I run and debug, again, it takes that email password, exact same thing as we did last time. We're gonna go body, the JSON, I'll move a little bit faster here. I'm gonna copy it from here. I'll paste it in. And then remember, uh, dollar sign curly brace email. And I'll do dollar sign curly brace password. Okay, so now that it takes that, I can go to test values. I'll initiate that. So the email, um, I'm just gonna use my existing user. I only have one, it's Prakash. And my password is password123. So I'll do prakash at email.com and I'll do password123. Now, if I've done this right, I should get returned um, a authorization token. So let me show you, if I do this here in Xano, I'll show you what it looks like. Email.com, password123. So if I run this, that is my authorization token and I use that to log into authenticated endpoints. So um, let me go ahead and send that. Uh, and then here we go, we get the data. Uh, why did I do, oh, <laughs> I left it as example.com. I have to actually take this endpoint. There we go, much better. Now I'm gonna hit send, and there I get that auth token. So if, if I select it, this is what I want. I select it, I go to request response. You can see that the name over here is auth token, and we wanna remember that. And that means that anytime we um, have people log in to our application, they're gonna need to provide an auth token. And that, that goes for any API endpoint that we set up. So let's actually um, change this up. So let's actually create a uh, new request. So now that we have that auth token uh, specified, um, in this case, I will go and I'll go back to Xano and this uh, get products API endpoint, I'm just gonna go ahead and toggle authentication. This means that when I try to um, run it, right, it's gonna require authentication. So let's just, let's just take this URL and put it in Bravo Studio, and then I'll hit send. 401 authorization required, right? So the way that we 
take that auth token that we just set up on the login is we specify headers. So here in the headers, we go authorization. And then here in the value, I'm going to unhide this so you can see, it's gonna be bearer space and then dollar sign curly brace auth token. Okay, so bearer is a bearer token. So 80 to 90% of login in the internet takes a bearer token after a person logs in and uses that. Bearer token is what we're gonna get from that auth token variable, okay? So now what's going to happen is when I run, or when I go to uh, test value, you'll see I'll hit send. It's going to ask for an authorization token. I'll just go back to Xano and I'll generate one. So if I go here, I'll log in, I'll hit run. Yep, email, uh, password123. Now it's gonna get past me that auth token back. I can copy that auth token, go back to Bravo Studio, paste in the test value, and then it should send <coughs> show me the list of the products uh, because I have that authorization token. So again, just to recap what we've done here in Bravo Studio, we've um, taken a list view, right? We've done a single item view and we went to the body and we uh, adjusted how we uh, are, get, are receiving that payload. Uh, we've done a post where we are creating a product. We've done login and then we have done an authenticated API endpoint. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to connect Xano uh, to Bravo Studio. They have plenty of documentation on how to display data on the page, so we won't cover that today. The only other thing that I wanted to show you is sometimes let's say you have a project and you don't want to manually add um, individual API endpoints. They actually have a cool feature called Swagger Import. So if I click on Swagger Import, it's going to ask for a file. And I can actually go to Xano and go to my API and go to Documentation Swagger, right? So here what I want to do is you see where this says uh, the API spec? I'll go ahead and click that. And then this I can do, I believe it's question mark. Yep, there it is, type equals JSON. Um, and then it gives me this uh, JSON list of all of my API endpoints from Xano. So what I wanna actually do is just save this file. You can do command S or file save. So I'll go ahead and save this as um, Bravo Xano API dot JSON. So now that I have that file, if I go to Bravo Studio, I'll take that file, I'll select it, I'll say OK, and I'll just call this Xano Swagger API, and I'll hit continue. So now what it's doing is it's finding all of those API endpoints, right? And I can just select them all, and if I hit continue, it imports everything in, right? How cool is that, right? So when if I go over here, everything is automatically done for me. So that's a great way to make it very easy to bring in all your data that Bravo Studio has set up. Um, but I just wanted to show you that individual way so you could learn how to add other API endpoints yourself. So hopefully this was helpful. I will see you in the next video.